What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can share your unsupervised machine learning results and analysis by building this Power BI dashboard from scratch. And more specifically, in the previous video, we have actually developed and trained an unsupervised machine learning model. A K means model. So we have all the code over here. Then we have stored our model, our results and our analysis. And then we have deployed them using a Streamlit app for live predictions which is basically this app over here where you get to input all the features and then click on cluster me and this is going to call our model and make a prediction. And then in this video, we are going to build this Power BI dashboard, which basically has all the analysis of our already trained unsupervised machine learning model. Right, and before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing we want to do is that we want to open a new blank Power BI file. And now we want to change our background settings. So over here, I'm going to change the, uh, what am I changing? The canvas background color into this light gray over here. I'm going to set the transparency to zero like this. And now I'm going to insert a picture that we're going to have in our background. So our dashboard looks a lot nicer and more professional. So I'm going to use this background picture over here. There you go. I'm going to make it a lot bigger uh, like this. There we go. It takes all the page and a bit smaller. Uh, change the style into fill. There we go. Be smaller and then a bit smaller uh, over here. Like this. Like this. Nice. Next, we need to add a text box, which is basically going to have our title. So I'm going to use all this space like this. There we go. Like this. Our title is going to be K means clustering for hair disease analysis. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it over here. I'm going to center it in the middle. Next, I'm going to add another image, which is going to be pick one, I think. There we go. And we're going to use this as our logo, let's say, on the top left, like, uh, let's say this. Next, I'm going to add another, uh, what am I adding? A new shape, a rectangle shape on top of our image. Like uh, this. And now I'm going to change the color of it. Uh, not this color. I think it's stellar color, same color as our background remove the border and then enable some transparency let's say 27 percent there we go like this so now we have a nice background for our dashboard next we're going to start loading our data so we can start creating our visuals so we're going to go over into home then click on excel workbook and we're going to select the main data with the predictions and this is the file that we have our main data and we also have our clusters that we have predicted using our k-means model. If we inspect it quickly, you can see we have all the clusters, click load. There we go. This is our one dot, let's say main data. Next, I want to load our cluster analysis text, which is uh, this text you see over here. So in the previous videos, we have stored this as a JSON file. So now we are going to load it as JSON. So I'm going to go over here, get data. I'm going to click on more and I'm going to type in, oh, JSON is over here. There's no need to type, click connect. I'm going to select our cluster summary JSON file, click open. This is going to open the Power Query editor and over here, I actually want to transform it into a table, as you can see like this. It basically added everything into column one, but it's fine with us. We can leave it as column one, click close and apply. And this is two cluster summaries. So I'm going to say uh, two dot and then uh, cluster summaries. Nice. 
The next file you have to load now is the PCA file. So let me show you quickly. Is one file that has the PCA principal component one and two, and then another file that has all of the analysis. So this data frame that has the averages of all of our clusters. So if I go back, I need to click on Excel workbook and I'm going to select the PCA two dimensions. And this is for the scatter plot analysis. Uh, I'm going to select sheet one. I'm going to click load. And this is going to be a three dot PCA. And then the last file we need to load is the analysis of the clusters. So is this file over here? I'm going to click load. I'm going to inspect it, so click on it. As you can see, it's the summary of our clusters. Click load, and I'm going to name this as four dot uh, cluster analysis. So let's do underscore analysis like this. Nice. The next thing we are going to do now is that we are going to start creating these slicers you see over here at the top. So I'm going to start with H. So I'm going to click on the slicer over here. And then from the main data, I'm going to add H. Next, I'm going to resize this. So I use the same space as I used in the previous dashboard. Let me get it quickly. So it's 84 and then 227. So over here, 84. And then over here is 227. I'm going to move this on the top right like this and now I'm going to copy and paste this three times because we have four slices in the previous dashboard. So two and then three like this. This one is going to be the age. So I'm going to add a title. The title is going to be age. I'm going to make it bold, move it in the middle like this and I'm going to remove the slicer header like this Actually, I'm going to remove the bolt because it takes too much space. So maybe like this, and then I need to reduce the size maybe. Uh, let me see over the values, a bit smaller, like this. No, it's still not all visible, so I'm going to make this slightly bigger, like this. So I'm going to delete these ones now, and I'm going to copy and paste it again because we have a new size. One, two, and then another one over here. The second slicer now is going to be the sex and it's going to be male or female. So I'm going to replace it like this. I'm going to rename it into uh, sex. And then I'm also going to change the settings. And over here, I want to use a tile like this. And I also want to change the values. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger so you can see. I want to remove the top and bottom from the borders like this and i want to change the coloring into maybe light blue like this next this slicer is going to be the cholesterol so i'm going to go over here and i'm going to select the cholesterol which is this one over here and then i need to take the name from the other dashboard so we are quick so copy and then over here i'm going to paste it like this uh, what I need to do here is I need to go back over here in the settings and change this into uh, between so we can have the slider over here. And the last slicer we have is going to be the chest pain. So if I go over here, it's going to be CP, copy, paste. Then over here, I'm going to change the settings into a tile. Uh, actually, I'm going to copy and paste this one because I need the same um, format. I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to bring it up. And now I'm going to switch sex with uh, chest pain in the title. I'm going to quickly copy the title over here and then settings title chest pain type. And I'm also going to change the settings to be a drop down like this. Now we want to add these cluster summaries over here, which is basically the text that our LLM model, the AI LLM model generated after we have fed it with the cluster analysis table. So to do this, we need to create a table, uh, which is this one over here. And then in the table, let me make it a bit bigger. I think we take all the space until here. I need to add the cluster summaries column one. There you go. And now we have the cluster summaries. What we need to do now is that we need to add a title and the title is going to be cluster summaries. 
So I'm going to copy it quickly. Oh, actually, it's not a title. We are going to rename the column one into cluster summaries and then edit it to look like a title. So like this, click enter, cluster summaries. And now I'm going to go over here in the column headers. I'm going to move it in the middle. I'm going to make it bold like this. And I think it looks just fine. Right, the next thing we wanna do now is to add the shadows in all of the visuals because I like them. So I'm just gonna select everything and go over here and then put the shadows in all of them like this. Next, we want to create this cluster chart you see over here, uh, which has the number of people per cluster. To do this, I'm going to copy and paste this one over here, and then I'm going to take how much space? I think up until uh, here, let's say. And this is now going to be this cluster bar chart. And in this bar chart, we are going to have the count of clusters over here. So I'm going to change this to count. And in the Y axis, we are going to have clusters. However, I'm going to change clusters to be text and not a number. So I'm going to edit the query. I'm going to scroll over here. I'm going to select cluster. I'm going to change this to text, replace current. And now I'm going to do close and apply. There we go. So now we have the number of people per cluster. I'm going to copy and paste the title quickly. So over here, I'm going to copy. I'm going to come back. I'm going to paste. Now I'm going to change the coloring a bit to something lighter maybe. So over here, the bars are going to be light blue like this. And then the data labels, I'm going to enable them and I'm going to change the color into a darker blue like this maybe. Maybe we can make this bold. Yeah, much nicer. And then I want to sort this by cluster. So we have zero, one, two, three, and four, and then the number of people. I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna change this column name to be the NO of people. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Maybe let's make this capital and this no capital. Number of people and then the clusters. Cool, that's fine. The next thing we want to create now is this scatter plot we have over here with the principal component one and the principal component two. To do this, I'm going to copy this and paste it, move it over here, make sure I take all the space, and then I'm going to change this into a scatter plot. I'm going to remove these two, and then I'm going to add principal component one into axis, sorry, X axis, and then principal component two into Y axis. And I'm going to change it from sum to be non-aggregated or don't summarize and then don't summarize like this. And then into the legend, we are going to add the clusters like this. Next, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to move the legend to be in the bottom center. There we go, like this. And now we have all of our five clusters visualized. The last thing we want to do now is to create this table you see over here at the end that has our cluster analysis and a few of the columns we have used to train our model. Now I'm going to copy and paste this into the existing dashboard just because I have spent a lot of time renaming all these columns so they make sense. Because in the model, we've used all these names. However, the end user is not going to know these names. So what I did is that I went over into the website that we got the data from and I've used the correct names about all these columns. And it took me some time, so you don't wanna see me going through and renaming all the columns. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy this table and paste it in our existing Power BI dashboard. However, we need to make sure that all the columns are exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to copy this three dot cluster analysis table, and I'm going to make and I need to make sure that our, oh, it's actually number four, so it's not gonna work. 
what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paste it over here, three dot cluster analysis, click enter. I'm going to change my PCA to be four. So it makes more sense like this, not 44, four like this. And now I'm just going to copy and paste this table. So I'm going to copy it, I'm going to move it over here. Now I'm going to paste it. There you go. And you can see it actually works fine. However, we need to increase the size of the page a bit so everything fits fine. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go over here, Canvas settings, I'm going to do custom, and I'm going to increase the height by, let's make it 90. Let's see if this fits. Uh, that's fine, maybe up until uh, here. It down, so this has to be a bit less now. Come back to... Uh, maybe 50 no not this what did i do go back yeah 80 this one to five there we go maybe uh maybe six there we go that's perfect and the last thing i have done over here which i haven't shown you is that i have conditionally format some of my columns to have these data bars so what i did is that i went over here i click on cell elements I selected the first column I have, which is the cholesterol. So over here, I clicked on data bars on, and then I changed the color of this data bar to be this light pink you see over here. And then I have also switched the bar direction from left to right to right to left. So I have, let's say the first feature looking that way, and then the second feature looking that way, which is the edge over here. With this way now, the business can actually see the results of the analysis of your machine learning model, your actually unsupervised machine learning model, which is K-means. And they can go deep and investigate the similar characteristics that the clusters have. They can also use the Streamlit app to input values and make live predictions depending on the characteristics of the person and see the cluster they fall into. Right, so I think this is a very good example to showcase how a data analyst or a data scientist can actually use an unsupervised machine learning model and then deploy it to the business. Okay, so this is the end of these three series unsupervised machine learning model examples. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and you've gained enough value out of them. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.